Hey everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the New Orleans Saints. With that, let's get over to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome with the call from New Orleans. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. Happy to be on hand. I'm Brandon Gordon with Charles Davis. And before we kick, partner, your keys to the game, please. Well, my keys are on the defensive side of the ball for both teams. And the big one, making sure you avoid giving up the big play. These safeties are going to get tested all game long. Their job, keep the ball in front of them, tackle people, make them run extra plays in order to try and score. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. There's a toughness about Jared Goff that maybe he doesn't get enough credit for. His freshman year at Cal, team went 1-11. His rookie year with the Rams, he was 0-7 as a starter. Undaunted in either case, and has come back each and every time to flash the ability that made him the number one overall pick in the draft when he came out of Cal. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Second down, here's Goff. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A Ram first down as Goff finds Cup. First down, it's Gurley. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. On first down, gone. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Out of the gun, gone. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. 
a little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Back to the ground game here. Gurley down to the 30 after a gain of three. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. Second down. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing Let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. The ball's still a few inches shy of the marker after the three-yard run, so now a little soul-searching on fourth down. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. A lot of energy in this building tonight, but the opening drive produces three. Maybe quiets them just a bit, at least momentarily. Just a little, right? That's all you're asking for, right? Things just getting started. You know they haven't taken the momentum totally here, but at the same time, they like what they've done here in the early going. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. On oh, the return, here's Trey Edmonds. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They're led out by their six-foot quarterback. You may have heard of him from Purdue. It's Drew Brees. Total relentlessness of consistency, almost like a machine. If you watch him in practice after every throw, he resets his feet, visualizes all the other options on a play. So if he has to do it in a game, it's already there, has the muscle memory. I started calling him AI for artificial intelligence. Whatever defense does during a game, he absorbs it and then uses it against them as the game moves on. So Bree's gonna lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at their own 27. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses.
Now Breeze on the bootleg. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Breeze now on first down. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Ready. Breeze now on first down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Cameron Meredith, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. And a very good offensive unit here. One of the reasons they're so good is running back Mark Ingram. Took a little while for him to find his footing when he got into the league, but the former Heisman Trophy winner has it now and has really upped his pass receiving potential. A nice player. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. Ginn has it complete. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. The defense here for the Rams. Becoming one of the better lockdown corners in the league is Marcus Peters. And I first noticed him when he was in college at the University of Washington. Very intelligent player. Understands route combinations, how teams can attack him. And how about what he's done in the NFL? 19 interceptions in three seasons. Five more than anyone else in the league has had. That gap is absolutely staggering. Here we go, here we go. Well, they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he's gonna be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. Now that's one they Still hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. So now they assess a third and long, and that holding call might have knocked him out of field goal range, at least for the moment. Again, it's Breeze. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. A nice job of bringing that in, but why was he so close to the sideline there? They had all kinds of room in the flat. A little bit of a lack of coordination between him and the quarterback because both of them should have seen that room that was available, that space. Stop your route a little bit shorter, put it on him, and let him turn and get upfield. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Now the Los Angeles Rams, they continue to be a great story this season. A solid, solid team. That wonderful start, although they did lose week nine, obviously, to New Orleans. So the 72 Dolphins celebrated again. Yeah, they got a chance to hug it out and still be the last team 
to go undefeated in modern football. 17 and 0 that team was, but let's face it, no one shedding any tears for the Rams after that loss to New Orleans. They still have weapons galore on offense, a stout defensive front led by Aaron Donald, leading their division. They're aiming for the playoffs, and as all their moves in the offseason and during the season, picking up Dante Fowler Jr. to rush the passer, they're shooting for the Super Bowl. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. A gain of six there on first. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots down the field. Goff now to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. A shotgun snap for Gong. It's complete. This is Todd Gurley. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. A gain of 13 and also a first down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Dumps it off to Gurley. And now running right through it. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Now Gurley staying down. Oh, let's hope he's all right. We'll check on his status when we get back. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to go up top for the end. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Ken Crowley. Trying to get it to Woods. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Football going back over to the New Orleans Saints uh, and a team this year, Charles, that really took off after that week one loss. For me, it all came together week nine. You think back to that game when they beat the Rams, knocked off their undefeated streak to start the regular season. So now, are the Saints really Super Bowl winning contenders? I mean, do you put them in that category? I certainly do. And I think people were wondering how they would respond this season after what happened to end last season, the Minneapolis Miracle where they ended up giving up the touchdown pass in the last play of the game in the playoffs. And when it started losing at home to Tampa Bay, many wondered if they're looking for Gannon. And it's intercepted. Picked off by John Johnson. And it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense.
Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm, at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. They'll run here with John Kelly. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there, and if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. And the ball situated at the nine, second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The crowd here in the dome making things difficult. Third and goal. From the gun, here's gone. And that is incomplete. The linebacker, Demario Davis, got a hand in to break that one up. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This will be just a 21-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And that'll make it 6-0 here in the first. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. And he'll need to find a way to shrug off the opening drive, if you can even call it a drive. One play and an interception, so he's got to forget that. I know that in today's football, we have a good number of coaches who don't look at time of possession the way that the, the old school guys did. But there's still a place for it. And I think that on this drive, after having thrown that interception, they're going to want to eat up a little bit more clock and run some offense and give their defense a little bit of a break. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Try to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 42. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. A 
give. This is Kelly. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. To throw on second down is gone. His throw incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby, and it's third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. From the gun on third down, gone. Man, open, it's cup. He's got it. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it, because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. are in for six and the Rams add on to their lead I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone well whatever he did speaking of the offensive coordinator might be using that formula going forward it worked there yeah, it worked very well he and his field general in pretty good sync right now they're starting to move the ball well Zerline good with a PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive spanned five plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Now, last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where 
every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Running with Kamara. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. I know it's the first half, but it's still hard to curb the enthusiasm for that stop. Third and one, and the offense can't get there. The defensive team has got to feel very good about themselves. Great job out leveraging the offense. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep, the dangerous Farrow Cooper. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And the Rams getting set to go now. And they're hoping to redo their efforts of the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Kelly on the counter. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Goff now looking to throw. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Back to throw, Goff. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A good rally to the football, holds him to two, and that brings up a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. 
Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. <laughs> He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if somebody got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Ready? You ready? They begin on the ground with Camaro, and he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit, and find Ready. our way back Ready. into this game. Back to the ground, this time with Ingram. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result, because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. And we will not see another play as time has run out on this first quarter. Plenty of scoring here already. We'll head back to New Orleans after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Comes to Ingram, shedding the tackle. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman, certainly flinched there before the snap. Start. A good call. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Ready. We're waiting. After the penalty, it's Ingram. Room to run past midfield. And finally taken down at the 44-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Ready. Ready. On first down, Breeze. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Three 
He's now 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. Breeze hands to Ingram. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They stay on the ground. This time it's Kamara. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And Lutz's kick is good. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13-3. So he gets a shot at atoning for the earlier miss here in the first half and able to knock it through. And what a relief for him, don't you think? Because how many games have we done where kickers missed one early? and never gotten a chance to atone for it the rest of the game. That's a lot to carry around. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, is that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, That'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see it. He's looked pretty good to this point. They'll fake the give. Now gone. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll hand it off to Kelly. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Check, check. 
Now a play fake, and it's gone. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. A very solid gain of 27. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Goff now 12 of 16 thus far. It's first and 10. They go play action with Gurley. Now Goff. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. This is Kelly. And an alley to run. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. You don't have to be a finished product to show some pretty good glimpses of what could be in this league. And we just saw an example of it on that nice run there. When I looked at him coming out of college, I saw a guy with raw, terrific ability. And I couldn't wait to see how it was going to be harnessed and polished up in the NFL. In fact, some people thought he could play a little slot receiver as well as run the football. This guy has the ability to be a big time player with more seasoning. From the red zone now, gone. Right side complete, that's Woods. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination, look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. A great play there. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Rams add on to their lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. Zerline connects on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of three, and it'll be second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Here's second and seven now from the 28. On second down, here's Breeze. Setting up the receiver screen here to Thomas. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Tight right, tight left. Ready. You waiting? Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. The tackle there by John Johnson. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They got to feel pretty good about that one. Ready? We're waiting. Moving shot. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. Blitz coming and down he goes. Samson Abukum coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They had not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Ready. Ready. Shotgun now for Breeze. And Ginn's got it. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Second down, Ingram. And he's going to get 
this inside the 30. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big Ready? defensive linemen wait, over his wait. face all game long that he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Now they'll throw with Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Hill. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The Saints on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And the pressure gets to Breeze as he's taken down. Samson Abuka in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the right hash, and call it an even 50 yards. And Lutz puts this one through, and that will close the gap down to 14. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder... Are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful at getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Cooper on the return. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Jared Goff and the Rams headed back onto the field. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Playing well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm, throw the football, feel good about things, keep things moving in the right direction. Right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. And we'll see if that continues. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Off play action. Here's Goff. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. 
fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. A give left side, Kelly. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down, here's Goff. Airing it out deep for... It's caught inside the 25. And he'll be down deep into New Orleans territory. A huge play that time for the Rams. 43 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Hey, four down, four down. Now Kelly running left. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Double on this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Cut. Cut. Here's Goff now on second down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Cooper Cup was his intended target. And now it's third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Third and long. It's gone. And that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Zerline's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. On the return, here's Edmonds. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 26. Ready, yellow lady, yellow lady. Three, three. Three, Bree's going to throw. 
Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Hill. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Throwing on second down. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Matt Longacre in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, <laughs> their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. They'll start on the ground with Kelly. And he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front, and to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there, a great start. Now we'll see what second down breaks. Offense. Right 
And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. The throw on second down is gone. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Goff now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. From the gun, here's Goff. Over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. A good pick up there, a 22. So we've come to halftime. It's the visiting Rams taking the lead to the break. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. In the game you're watching, it was Jared Goff with a strong first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. On the return, here's Edmonds. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 26. Ready? Yellow waiting, yellow waiting. They start the second half with Kamara. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that'll bring up a second and 11. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Breeze to throw on second down. 
And Thomas has it. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Breeze now 13 out of 17 throwing the ball. He's got a first down. The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by Mikel Roby Coleman. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stride. Thomas, the intended target. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? How do they score here, especially a touchdown? It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you feel like you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Yeah, still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Goff now to throw. Throw left side, complete to Cup. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there, 26 yards. one to Gurley and able to work his way down to the 16 eight yards on the pickup and now they'll have some options on second and short he had a ton of success here so far but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one yeah even on that one there was a little bit of a hole but it closed there quickly at the end Again, they run with Gurley. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like his focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Turns and gives to Gurley. No gain on the play there. Second down. But at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Second down, this is Gurley. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. 
Todd Gurley. A 13-yard touchdown run. And the Rams add on to their lead. And we know they won't get their names in the stat sheet, but the offensive line has to get all the credit for that touchdown run. Tremendous job of blocking, paving the way for the six points. Zerline now for the PAT. Zerline good with a PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So the drive there took six plays. And it's finished off by a Todd Gurley touchdown run. Zerline out now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Whether it's what we call an even front or an odd front, and an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, typically that's an odd front defense. Odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle. Whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Four down, four down. Ready? Ready? Now a handoff to Ingram. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Ready? Ready? Breeze now to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And that'll make it third down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Ready. We're waiting. Wait now Breeze on third down. That's complete to Meredith. And he's got this down to the 35. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. 
partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Gal, the guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Back to the running game. It's Ingram. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. Ingram again, a first down carry. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points, and that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. On second down, Kamara. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. And Dominic Sue makes the tackle. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And he locates Josh Hill, complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Breeze now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Ginn from six yards away. And the Saints make some inroads here to that deficit. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Ready, yellow waiting, yellow waiting. They'll try and run with Ingram. And he's going to be hit and taken down in the backfield. Just nowhere to run that time. And the try for two is snuffed out. You know, sometimes the guy on the defensive side of the ball, he just has a good feeling or a good read and he unleashed his defense on that one. Boy, they stopped him in a big way. Yeah, I hate to be cliche, but sometimes we overanalyze. They just have more want. Looked like they had more <laughs> want right there. More want and more people to the ball.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out. But a running game can really benefit your team right now. Play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes a quarterback look a whole lot better. Down, it's Gurley. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Shotgun snap for gone. It's caught left side by Cooks. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 right at the 40. Now a handoff for Gurley. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley, and he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Nine yards on the pick up there as he'll be left with third and one. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Rams on third down, three for seven so far in this game. They're up against a third and one situation. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count and a five-yard penalty ensues. False start, offense. Hey, check, check. So that'll back him up five. Still third down. Three. 
Well, that's a tough, costly penalty because now it makes it third and six after the false start. Out of the gun, gone. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So out comes the field goal team once more. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And did he have enough? He did. He kept it on line and managed to tuck it into the bottom right corner. And that will extend their lead even further. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Ready? You ready? Throwing now is Bree's. It's brought in right side by Ginn. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Four down, four down. Ready. We're waiting. A handoff. It's Mark Ingram. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And fortunate to get points on the board last time, they had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game 
are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at the 20. They go play action with Gurley. Now golf. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 32 that time. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. It's a nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he showcases the spin, a pretty good game before he's taken down. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Yeah, once more, strong running, excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Going for the deep ball. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived, and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Back to the air, golf on second down. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Goff now looks to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Now it's Zerline to try the Ram field goal. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through.
After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. On the return, here's Edmonds. Spins away. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big hey, plays wait. and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. Now Breeze. That's caught by Meredith right side. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Breeze now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Ready. Yellow lady. Breeze on the draw gives to Camara. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Ready, yellow lady. On second down, here's Breeze. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to his running back, Alvin Kamara. And it's third down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And an alley to run. Down the numbers. There he goes. And he will score. Touchdown, L.A. Defensively, they've had their way in this one. That pick six makes that scoreboard even more lopsided. I remember talking with a guy in the league, and I said, what do you do when the game's like this? You know, it's pretty much over. You ready to go to the bench and hang out? He said, oh, heck no. I want to stay on the field. I might get some stats. I might get a pick or two. <laughs> you like being out there at the end of these wide margins. When they have to throw it, that gives you more opportunities to go get it. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And here's Lewis. And a pretty slick return there as he's up just shy of the 45-yard line. Even after that big-time return, it's not looking great for them today. But if nothing else, even if the miracle doesn't happen, they can turn to this play and say, hey, we can move forward. Maybe it's a building block for the rest of the season. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 43. Now Breeze to try again after the pick six. He'll let it fly in the direction. That's caught inside the 20. And great yardage here all the way deep into Los Angeles territory. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. Ready? They'll run it now out of the gun. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Now that run is one to build on, and I know it sounds like a cliche, and it seems like a simple thing, but truthfully, coaches are always looking for something to pull out of a tough day. And right now, this team has had one of those. So that run there, I guarantee that's a clip and save as they move forward and look towards the next game. And he'll tell his team, this is what we're looking for. This is what we planned for. Let's have more of this to start games as opposed to getting it at the end. Side of the five, right around the six-yard line. Matt Longacre in there to get him for his second sack of the night. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. One man in the backfield, that's Ingram on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's go and see what happens. Breeze now on third and goal. And this is going to be incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No pick, just incomplete that time. And a field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. Full start, offense. A fourth and short, had your offense out there. That one stings. And you know something? Your options change dramatically. Still fourth down. Not only is it tougher to go for it, but what if you decided just to line up and try and draw them off sides? If you did it on fourth and short, you could pick up the cheap first down. Now, you still won't get a first down, even if you do exactly the same thing. A field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. Single receiver, single. Ready, 90. Single receiver. 
Now Breeze got to have this one. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So that right there was his second pick, but keep in mind, this is a guy who once had a rare three-interception game in his career. So what are you saying, that getting two in a game, that's like kid stuff for him? That's nothing. He's already Amateur done that, hour. right? Been there, done that. You know he wants a third again. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. We've got a lopsided game here. I, I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, <laughs> we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance, where they took control of this game, how they've managed to keep control of this game, and then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. <laughs> in a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. Here we go. 180. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Hey, four down, four down. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. He had another carry here tonight for Gurley. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brandon, that's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. It's Gurley. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. And five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The Rams on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This will be third and six. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and ten. They'll hand it off to Kelly. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Again, it's Kelly. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. 
I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. The Rams on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and eight. Play action. It's gone. They got him in. It's Woods. Touchdown, L.A. Robert Woods, 51 yards. And the Rams have got it on cruise control. And now we've hit that stage of the game, partner, where one of our predecessors, one of the great commentators of all time, he used to sing in this situation when this game appeared to be over. <laughs> I know the fat lady's been singing for some no, time. No, 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 not her at all. This is one of our guys. But she's singing too. Oh, she's singing. She, yeah, she's at she's least, on like the fifth tune at yeah, this point. Yeah, she, she left scales way behind. But he used to sing something about turning out the lights. The party was over. Zerline now for the PAT. Zerline good with a PAT. And the lead will swell by one more. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And here's Lewis. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 27. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. We got three, we got three. We're ready. We're ready. On first down, Breeze. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. To give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by the pro bowler, Marcus Peters. And a terrific return as he brings this one all the way back to the 30. What a nightmarish game he's having now. Six interceptions that he has thrown. Absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? 
hard to believe we're watching this and have seen it, but it just tells you about the game of football. It giveth and it taketh away. Yeah, the guys, though, that have thrown six interceptions in a game, the likes of Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, I think Joe Namath, he did it three times. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. The outcome of this one, well, we know who's going to win it. It's just all window dressing at this point. Got me thinking, what's, what's the biggest blowout that you've been a part of as a player, a broadcaster? Well, I'm not going to go to the player part because when I think blowout... Because you won about, every game as a no, player. No, no, no. I think about being blown out. <laughs> and no one wants to go back to those memories. But, you know, when I was calling college football, I saw a game that, you know, team put 70. I actually saw it happen twice. A team put 70 on their opponent. And in the NFL in the 2017 season, I saw one of those changing of the guard games where a team that hadn't been very good before now is dominating and kicking around a team who had been ruling their division. And that's when you earn your paycheck, right? Yes, as, the, as the analyst, you got to fill that time. You've got to know what's going on out there and how it all happened. Well, obviously, that begs the question. What game was it? That was Seattle hosting Los Angeles, the Rams. Ah, yeah. Their second meeting of the season, and the Rams turned it around from their first one and blew out the Seahawks. Now Gurley. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. Touchdown Rams. Tyler Higby, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Well, this game is definitely over, but we do know some people like to go ahead and continue to add to their score, don't we? Yeah, I, I don't know that they need to add any more right now, though. I'm just starting to think about those dinner plans tonight, my friend. Well, you and I will be thinking about dinner plans, but we also know they're playing people are thinking, how can I get some more scores for my fantasy, for ever, other things? They're trying to figure that part out now. By the way, last weekend we went sushi because that's what you wanted. We're going steak tonight. I'm in. All right. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily what you look at your plays. Oh, this hurts the defense. 
I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. Ready. We're waiting. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Over the middle. That's caught by Meredith. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver, and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success, as they did on that play. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. On first and ten, here's Breeze. And an alley to run. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. The number seven, usually lucky here, not for him. Seven picks he's thrown in this game. That's only happened six times since 1960. And I know that the most recent time it happened, the guy who threw him, he had won a Heisman Trophy in college, so sometimes you just have a lousy game. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad career, but when you're talking about one game, seven, you're right, not lucky at all. Yeah, Ty Detmer, the last to do it in 2001 to throw seven picks. He's down to about the 40. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with a lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did right. that plus three. They'll fake the give. Now Goff. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now, look, if they just do that all the way downfield, ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Third and two, gone. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control 
to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Try and push it in with Gurley. And Gurley he fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20-yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams call from the 10-yard line in the green zone. That's your money zone. He fumbles the ball inside the money zone. You have one job, take care of the ball. That didn't happen. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Had one tell me once, you know, when we were having a tough patch, this two shall pass, this two shall pass, and then finally we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he gets it to the 30 when it's all said and done. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So first and 10 now from the 30. Breeze now on first down. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A gain of 32 that time. Breeze now on first down. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Into the red zone. It's Breeze. And this is caught at the eight. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident, keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Ready, United. Now, Breeze again. And somewhat of a measure of revenge as he's in for the touchdown, but they still trail big time. He'll take it, but he won't be able to smile about it. But yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Will Lutz on for the point after. Lutz with the extra point as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. Five plays there on that drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They have the big cushion here in the final stages of this one. I don't know if there's any better feeling than being up big on the road. There really can't be, because for a team to go on the road and win in the NFL, that's huge to begin with. But just think about all the preparation that went into it. When they first started talking about this game, leading up to it during the week, going on the road, unfamiliar city, obviously, unfamiliar hotel, no one's going to be with you once you get to the stadium. They're all going to be against you. You name it, all those things they had to deal with, they were able to conquer them and do it convincingly. Yeah, they did it very convincingly. And now the final moments of this one. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Von Bell up to make the tackle. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. On the counter, Gurley. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone.